Hey, so welcome back to the podcast. I think about you a lot. I was laying in bed the other day thinking, imagine what you are experiencing right now, the headwinds. Now, I'm not saying it's got you down. I'm not saying that the world has got you like, oh, I'm never going to sell a house again. But we have to look at the reality, right? I looked at market conditions, higher interest rates, less demand. And I know that can have an impact on some people's psychology. It can certainly have an impact on, at times, our certainty, right? Creating that 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 sense of uncertainty, like, what do I do today? And I thought about like other businesses in my 30 plus years, three decades of doing this, other industries that have gone through. And I actually thought about the other day, thinking about my guest today, um, how the Cleveland Cavaliers must have felt, if you know that team, after LeBron James brought a championship and then left to my Los Angeles Lakers. But I think about like how the people in Cleveland must have felt after that unbelievable rush of victory and experience and we did it, right? Like we finally did it. And then it feels like the world fell apart. Some people in our industry could say between, you know, call it June or July of 2020 during the pandemic, when all of a sudden real estate became just on fire all the way through, really until depending upon where you are in the world, March or maybe April of 2022, 20, you know, 22, when all of a sudden higher interest rates, inflation, and all these things kicked into gear. Well, it would feel like winning the Super Bowl and then wondering, what do I do for a living? I know maybe not you listening right now, but I guarantee there's someone listening right now that knows exactly the feeling I'm referring to. And that's why I've asked my buddy Alan Stein to come in and talk about how do you go from the climb to the highest moment and how do you not drop off, but instead sustain that and maybe even raise the bar and again, so, Alan, welcome to the show, man. Oh, man, it's so great to be with you. I'm looking forward to a fun convo. For sure. For, you know, I have to say, I'm, I'm literally, like, I'm like a podcast lunatic, listening all the time, you know, and I'm, I'm listening to Ed Milet interview you. Big shout out to Eddie Milet. And then, like, the next day, Trey Willard texts, and like, hey, man, you got to meet this guy. And then Phil Jones, hey, you got to meet this guy. And I'm like, all right, the, the universe is clearly <laughs> telling me something. Download the audiobook, start listening. And I was like, there's just so many insights in your work to help any person that I'm talking to today. To like, We all go through it, right? Like in your own career, in your life, you, you hit these moments where you're like, I'm unstoppable. And then at times we feel very stoppable. So for give people some context. Who is Alan Stein? What kind of brought you to this moment? What did you do before so we can get into what you do now? Well, first and foremost, the reason I wrote the book was because I was feeling stoppable. So I wrote the book because it was the book I needed to read and it was the advice that I needed to follow. And oh, I, I find it both liberating and therapeutic to research and study the very things that give me issues. So yes. one thing yes. I say all of the time in full transparency, uh, that I, what I share on stage and what I share on page, I'm not coming from a place of mastery. Right. These are all things I'm working right. on. Right. But I That's have a found beautiful some distinction. Things. Well, thank you. And, mm -hmm. I, and I found some things that have helped me. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited to share these with the folks that may be feeling some yes. of the pressure of these headwinds. But yes. quick synopsis, yeah. basketball was my first love fell in love with the game at five years old. Yep. And I am so grateful that here four decades later, mm -hmm. basketball is still a major passion and pillar of my life. Yes, I spent the first part of my life as a dedicated player, then became a very dedicated performance coach, uh, and then became in the current iteration, keynote speaker and author, but still drawing on all of the lessons and principles yes. and mindsets that I learned through yes. the game. And I teach folks how to apply those to their businesses and their lives. My friend listening now knows the, the correlation between sports and business is very real. I don't care if you have, if I bring yeah. Mel Robbins on, right. I bring you on, I bring, like anybody will say, run plays that work, which is something that I talk about all the time, Absolutely. right? So, so let's talk about what people are dealing with right now is, hey, I used to be at this level and and they're still winning. The person listening right now, they're like, I'm still winning, but yeah. when you go from winning at this level to winning at this level, that that decrease in winning, it's yeah. still winning, yes. but it's a decrease. Yes. How do we help people reset their psychology, reset their mindset and get back to that like, I am unstoppable. The market is the market. Yes. There's nothing I can do about that, but I can be my best self every single day. How do we do that? The very first thing I say is, Folks need to give themselves a little bit of grace and a little bit of space to feel how they're feeling. And I have nothing but massive empathy and compassion for anyone that feels stuck, that feels stoppable, that mm -hmm. feels like I'm a little bit less than where I'd like to be. Yeah. So I always start with that. How do I do that though? Like, I mean, I, I get it. Yeah. I get it. Like, okay, I need to mm -hmm. take a day and just say, look, fairy, 
relax, stop beating yourself up. Like, what is it? What's the, what's the hack? What's the pattern? What's the play I run? I think I could make a compelling argument that the things we say to ourselves, our self-talk and our self-narrative are yeah. the most important things we will ever say. Yes. So we have to start learning to talk to ourselves the same way we would talk to a friend or a loved one. Yeah. If you called me up tonight, mm -hmm. and I know we're new friends, but if you called me up tonight and said, I'm feeling stoppable, I'm feeling stuck, I'm struggling, yeah. the very first thing I would do would be to try to comfort you. Yeah. to let you know I believe in you, yeah. that I care about you yeah. and that you got this. The last yeah. thing I would do would, would add shame and guilt, would be critical, right. would right. pile it on. Right. Yet a lot of high drivers, a lot of ambitious people, that's the first thing they do to themselves. Right. And they take these negative feelings and they either try to resist them or suppress mm -hmm. them or ignore them, which yeah. I don't recommend. Yeah. But then they start being very critical and they start stacking on the shame and guilt and that only weighs them down. So the first thing you have to do <clears throat> is just let it go. So Alan, I hear you and I know it. And I've done that. I've also done the look myself in the mirror and go, fairy, get off your ass. Stop being a candy ass. You need to get out there. You need to man up. So how do you balance the two? Is there a right or wrong? Or do you have to do the sort of self-care love first and then flip sort of like the stages of grief? It'll be a little different for everyone. I, yeah. I try not to look through the lens of right or wrong, good or bad with yeah. anything. I try to look at What's everything the plan through that works a very, for you. Yes, yeah. very yeah. neutral, very sterile lens. So I would yeah. never say to someone the way they're viewing themselves is wrong or is good or is bad. Right. They need to figure out what's right. I know what has worked for me because you have to realize in the beginning of March 2020, I felt massive headwinds as a keynote speaker because on March 13th for the next 48 hours, my entire schedule for the year was wiped clean because right. of the pandemic. Right. And yes, there was a little bit of panic. There yeah. was a little bit of fear. Yeah. Yeah. But then the next thing I leaned into was, uh, how can I start adding values to others? Mm -hmm. How can I start doubling down and forging and strengthening relationships? Mm -hmm. And how can I get crystal clear on the long game? Yeah. That right now, short-term things might be a little bit tough, but I'm not in this for the short term. I'm right. in this for the long term. And, right. and what I've recommended to clients and the same medicine that I take myself, learn to refocus on the next play. So mm -hmm. the, the 30 months where things were raining money and it was great, that's now over. You can't right. be focused on that. We have to move to the next play. Focus on what you have control over. Control the controllables, right. which is your attitude and your right. effort. Right. And then refocus the lens on the process. Yes. Yeah, you've got your North Star. You've got where you want to be one, five, 10, 20 years from now. But refocus that lens on the process and let's start getting, let's, let's invest in that now. And when I started making investments in others, making investments in relationships, and then double down on basically my own self-care and my habits and my mindset, that's when things started to escalate. And now that things are getting better, right. I'm reaping the benefits of the seeds that I planted when things were dark. And that's what yeah. I would recommend to your audience. You don't know how long this is going to last, no. but if you plant these seeds now, it will get better and they will bloom at some point. So make sure you make the effort to do that. It's so interesting you're, as you're saying this, for my friend listening right now, if you were with me during the pandemic, you remember me saying, you got to take care of you and you got to take care of your loved ones and you got to take care of your clients. That's first and foremost. Then you have to load the cannon. You better keep doing the work, load the cannon sort of metaphorically, like yeah. continue yeah. to market, continue to deliver value. This isn't about asking people if they want to buy or sell right now. It's just more like, hey, Alan, checking in. Are you okay? Absolutely. And everyone that did that in kind of, let's call it end of March, April, May, June, their referral business skyrocketed through the roof in the real estate industry. With that said, we're talking about going from this incredible level that they had no, you had no control of this. This right. was just, the market just took off and went for an, a meteoric run. Some of them now still feel like, you know, hey, I went from winning the Super Bowl to, to like losing and they're still making a fortune, but they sure. feel like they're losing. So the first thing is you're saying, you got to give yourself some grace, mm -hmm. right? Second thing I heard is you got to ask yourself some better questions to empower both the short-term and the long-term. How do I take control? What do I need to focus on short-term and long-term? I hear all that. Is there a third move that you've found once, once I get back in the groove? You know, like it's it, the first phone call is the hardest. Of course. The 10th one's kind of easy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, so I'm, I'm now, <clears throat> I don't know, three phone calls in, seven text messages in. I'm back to doing what I know I need to do. Call it the basics, fundamentals, call it whatever you want. It's called working. It's called helping clients. It's called building a business. But we still run into these, these losses, these, of course. I took the shot mm -hmm. and I missed, or worse, I took the shot and I made it, and then I stopped. Mm -hmm. What have you learned in business and in sports to get that person back on defense as quickly as possible or get ready to take another shot? Well, it is that concept <clears throat> of next play. And I use the term next play. It's a, it's a kind of a trigger for myself that anytime mm -hmm. I find myself 
focused on something that is in the rear view mirror, then I know that I'm not looking forward. So you yeah. have to wipe that slate clean. Yeah. If you take a player like Stephen Curry, I right. mean, he, he's the greatest shooter of all time for a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm. But one of the reasons is he has that next play mentality. Right. It doesn't happen very often because he's such a good shooter. Right. But statistically, it's happened a, a few times where he could miss the first seven shots of a game. Yep. But he shoots the eighth one with the confidence as if he had made the previous seven. He doesn't bring baggage from the past and allow it to affect his performance in the present. Yes. So he shoots that eighth one with the confidence that it's it's going in. He, he never shoots a shot without the belief that it's going in. Okay. I want to unpack how, but I want, I want my friend here listening. In our world, the person listening right now, on, they, let's say they do an open house mm -hmm. and the first three people that walk through are like, ah, I'm just looking. I just, you know, I'm just curious. It's kind of, I'm not really interested. I already have an agent. They give them, they basically just no, 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 no. Right. The problem is they sometimes take that personally. Right. And then the next yes walks in and they treat them like a no. Right. I, one of my clients I was with yesterday, um, demand is down on all the portals, realtor.com yes. and Zillow and Trulia, right? D demand's down, interest rates are up. It's, it's cause and effect, right? Sure. And yet intent is really high right now. But when all you're thinking about is demand is low and nobody's buying and things aren't as fast and I've got too much time on my hands and I'm not sure if this is working right now, then a yes walks through the door and you treat them like a no. I know the person listening, like yeah. they know what I'm talking about. Absolutely. How do I switch that? How do I, how do I miss seven shots in a row, miss seven appointments in a row, miss seven opportunities to get a signed contract in a row and walk into the eighth with the same bravado, the same confidence, the same skills. How do I do that? You learn to untether from results. You learn to untether from external metrics. And I know this is very counterintuitive. That's hard. That's of hard for people. Is. Yes. Well, 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 the real estate game is very externally metric driven, right. as is the game right. of basketball. Right. The team with the most points on the scoreboard when the final buzzer goes off is the winner. So I understand the yes. external metric. Yes. But it doesn't mean that you have to derive your value, your self-belief, and your self-confidence from that. See, when you can learn to love the work, when you can learn to love doing the open house, when you can learn to love serving someone that may not buy from you anyway, yeah. then you've already won in advance. Yeah. See, you're, you're not, you're not rolling the dice and saying, yeah. if they buy, yeah. then I've won and I feel good. If yeah. they don't buy, I've yeah. lost and I feel bad. Yes. To me, I don't want to be on that roller coaster. Yeah. So I've learned to love the work, love the process. And this is hard. And I, I'm not no, saying I love I've mastered it. it I, yeah. But if you can learn to <clears> love the actual work and the yeah. process, eventually you'll start getting the outcomes you desire. But so, I believe the outcomes yeah. are a byproduct yeah. of loving the work and doing the work the right way consistently, yeah. especially during the unseen hours. Someone, I agree with you hundred percent. I've always fall in love with the work and the money follows. That's yes. the way I was conditioned early on. Fall in love with the work, do the work. You may not like it. It's a grind. Make it hundred phone calls a day or whatever it may be. It's a grind. But if you fall in love with it, the money will always follow. The challenge is someone listening right now is going to go, yeah, but Steph Curry still gets $40 million a year. If I don't kill, I don't eat. So how do I balance that? Any insight on that? Well, and, and I live in the same business. Right now, my business primarily is made through keynote presentations and corporate presentations. Right. And if people don't hire me to speak, then I don't make you money don't eat. either. Yeah. But I've, I have such belief in the process that if I do what's right, eventually yeah. the outcomes will start to line up in my favor. Yeah. Now, when there's things going on that are outside of our control, like you said, things in the market, interest rates, right. we don't have any control over that. And anytime we obsess or worry about things outside of our control, it means we can't put that emotional energy into the things that we can. Right. So we, once again, we right. have to learn to untether. And I'm not implying that this is easy. No. I know I'm saying this no. in a very a matter of fact heard, tone, we've but heard it's for hard. A million years, like, you know, control the uncontrollables, <laughs> focus on what you can control. And there's a reason why the, the, the most extraordinary mentors and parents and, you know, like leaders say that stuff because it's true. Yes. The how is hard. The how is very hard. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I want to go back to something we were talking about before we even hit hit record is yeah. this concept of uncertainty. Yeah. And that word has been used exponentially more often since the pandemic hit. For sure. But I, I want to let folks know the future has always been uncertain. Yes. It, we've, yes. There's been times where yes. we've lulled ourselves into thinking there's a level of security and certainty, yeah. but there never has been. The yeah. future has always and will always be uncertain. You and I cannot predict with 100% accuracy, even what's going to happen later this afternoon, <clears throat> nope. much less what's going to happen six months or a year from now. Right. So the first thing we have to do is learn to be comfortable in the face of uncertainty and know that we don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Not easy to do, yeah. Yeah. but is imperative. And we can't, because we can't resist what yeah. is. Yeah. Having a level of acceptance yeah. over what is going on. See, it, ultimately we increase our stress when we wish things were different than they were in the moment. Yep. So the more we sit around wishing that interest rates would improve and the market would improve yep. and that inventory would improve, 
that's what causes our stress. We're fighting against reality. Right. And that's a fight you will lose 100% of the time. Yes. So learning to say, what's going on in the world right now is not my preference. Mm -hmm. And we're allowed to have preferences. Right. Trust me, I've right. got a lot. Right, right. But I don't control that. Yeah. What do I have control over? Yeah. Well, I control relationships. Yep. I control how much value I add. Yep. I control open houses. I control all of these things. And that's what I'm going to put my focus on. And I just have to have the belief that over time, yep. things are going to start to work out in my favor. You're, you're like speaking my business love language. I, I, tell, I posted a couple of weeks ago, 70-30. Uh, Which one are you focusing on? The 30% the of the transactions that aren't happening in the market or the 70% of the transactions that are happening in the market, right? Like it. It's, it's just, it's hard. This is a really good podcast. Like we can end right now and, and the, someone's going to go, it's exactly what I needed to hear, right? Like reset my focus on what I can control yes. over and over again. What are you most proud of from the book? What's the thing that people talk about the most from both books? What I'm most proud of was, as I mentioned before, I wrote the books almost as a self-healing process. Yes. And I'm proud of the fact that I've been able to execute and implement the very things that I'm yeah. asking others to do. Yes. Uh, yes. I always want to, to, my life to be congruent on or off camera right. Right. With, with my beliefs and my core values. And yeah. I'm, I'm proud that I do that most of the time. Not perfect, Nobody's fallible perfect. and flawed. Right. Nobody's but but perfect. I've put yeah. most of these things into practice and I've seen my life yeah. get better as yeah. a result. And yeah. that's why I'm, I'm adamant about sharing it because I yeah. want that to be something that, that other folks experience. Yeah, that was very much my second book. This one right here, Life by Design. It was like, okay, yeah, I've done, you know, whatever, 30, 40,000 hours of coaching. But, you know, when you're coaching somebody professionally, personally, you're, as you're saying, you know, you might want to, after we've impacted, you should consider, let's look at this, adding this into your schedule. Yeah. The whole time every coach is going, I need to add that in my schedule. I need to do more of that. I need to, you know, like it's, everyone listening right now knows what I'm talking about, right? When you're, yeah. when you're helping a buyer make a better decision, right? When you're counseling to act or not act. Yep. You're also, it, it's like an internal, external experience. Cause you're like, this is also me. I need to get my ass on the phone also. Like I need to commit more, Absolutely. right? Or stop doing stuff that doesn't work, right? Yes. Um, so I love that. Looking back, take me, take me back to the very beginning of your speaking business. There might be somebody listening right now that Alan is like, they got their real estate. Think about the blessing of this. They mm -hmm. got their real estate license in like April, of 2022. <laughs> it's, it's like the person that will say to me all the time at events, I'm like, Hey, when'd you get in the business? They're like 2007 July. And I'm like, Oh, <laughs> right after the Lehman brothers meltdown, the whole mortgage market imploded. We went straight into a massive recession. I make the argument for people that when you start during hard times, it's way better than oh. starting during nothing but an ascending market. Cause all you're used to is nothing is easy, but easier. Yes. A different kind of hard, you with me, versus starting in a high interest rate, challenging environment. You went from basically being performance coach, helping people with fitness and Nike camps and LeBron James and Kobe Bryant and all this stuff. And you're like, I know what I'm going to do. I'm now going to become a professional speaker. That was an easy transition, right? Before I, I want to double down on something you just said, and then yeah. I promise that I'm yeah. going to get back to yeah. that. The best coaches and the best players that I've ever been around mm -hmm. intentionally make their workouts and their practices 10 times harder than the games will right. ever be right. because they want that. As you said, things will have the, the illusion of being easier. Mm -hmm. They make conditions so adverse during workouts and practice that the right. games almost become right. a delight. And they lean into the fact that when things are tough, yep. that is my best opportunity to improve. Yep. So that's the switch that I would want your, your listeners to, to make is to say, if things are going to be tough, and we don't know for how long, right. this is the best opportunity for me to strengthen myself, right. to get better, to right. plant these seeds. Right. And, and I've always believed that when things are adverse, that's your best opportunity to increase market share. Yeah. Because even a bad agent can sell houses when everybody's selling houses, right. but right. you have to be really good yes. at what you do yeah. when things are tough. Yeah. So take that challenge head on. Be thankful for an opportunity to work on your craft when things are less than ideal. For because sure. when the pendulum swings back and things are good again, yeah. you will be absolutely unstoppable, unshakable and unbreakable, but you have to get those reps in now. And, yeah. and, and that's, so I had only been speaking for a couple of years when the pandemic hit and yeah. comple completely upended my business. And yes. I, I had to make the shift to doing everything remotely and virtually. Yeah. And that was really hard. Yeah. I feed off of the energy. That right. was why I wanted to come here to do this in person I know. I know. because I knew I know. being in the room yes. with you and yep. seeing you, yep. you know, shoulder to shoulder yep. would be a much better experience. And yes. I prefer to do in-person speaking engagements, but when that was not an option, yeah. 
I had to lean into the fact that, all right, I need to sharpen up my communication skills when I'm doing things remotely. Right. That what I was doing on stage in front of an audience is going to be nuanced, different than mm -hmm. I can do virtually. Yes. But I leaned into it and I embraced that. Yeah. And I worked on skill sets. You know, giving a 45 minute Zoom presentation when you get zero feedback, you can't see or hear anyone right. is really hard. Right. But now that the world's opened back up and I'm back on stages, Oh my gosh, it's absolutely amazing. Well, I've raised you the level were, of my craft. Exactly. What you when you can perform and and all my clients know cuz so we were on Zoom in like 2016, 2017 so yeah, the pandemic. Yeah, you were ahead kid, of the curve. I literally just told well, we just we just wanted to have better we were always over the phone. Yeah. From like, you know, for me from 1992 doing business coaching to yeah. you know, literally 2016 I'm like <laughs> Why aren't we doing video? Face to face is always better. You see people's eyes, expressions, what's going on, right? Like yeah. you get more, right? Yeah. So when when it hit, I'm like, just do all your presentations on Zoom. Yeah. You have a Zoom. And they're like, oh. Yep. But then it was the better lighting, better, you know, making sure I've got a good microphone, all the little nuances. Sure. How do I learn to share a screen and present? You're speaking my love language to my clients. Cause a lot of my customers, the person listening right now, yeah, this is their market. Of course. They know this is the time. This is the time when when the people that were selling a house now and then are gone. Yeah. This is when the cream rises, all yeah. those cliches, all those examples. That's exactly what we're seeing right now. 70% of all the volume and transactions in every MLS in the US is basically managed by the top 25%. Mm -hmm. But the top 10% do 51% of all the business. My goodness. Right. So the, like the group you were with last night. Yes. You know, 3,000 deals, oh. 2,800 deals, you know, 1,000 deals, 500 deals. He was at, a, uh, we had a little cocktail party last night at my house after a mastermind. That group is like this. We've been waiting for this oh, market. They were, but they still need these skills. Of course. They still need these skills. So, And I could feel that in the room. It was palpable, yeah. the, just the mindset and the approach yeah. of the people in that room, all of whom I was meeting for the very first time. Yes. But within 30 seconds of a conversation, yeah. you could see their eyes light up. Oh, they, yeah. they love oh, the yeah. challenge Big and they time. lean into adversity. Yeah. And really that's just a mindset. Yeah. You know, the, the way our body perceives excitement and anxiety are very, very similar, but we can just tell ourselves. Yeah. Because people ask me, do I get nervous before I take the stage? Yeah. And the answer is no. I yeah. get really excited. Right. I get the butterflies. I get yeah. the palm sweating. Yeah. But I know that I'm prepared and I've done my work in the unseen hours to go out there and kill it on stage. So I'm not nervous. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm like a caged lion. Like put me on that stage because like, I'm so go. excited to share. Yep. And it's the same mindset that I want yeah. your listeners to have. Yes. Things yes. may be tough for the yeah. next little bit, but yeah. I love tough. I want tough. I want to lean into tough because tough is what's going to separate you for me. Yeah. And that, yeah. So I'm, I'm excited for the opportunity that you're, you're going to have to work have. on that excitement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll try to bring more energy next yes, time. Yes. <laughs> so when I was listening to, uh, the show you did with Eddie, the thing that stood out for me was like, I'm a, I'm a big fan of simplify. I think that most people try and do too much too fast, mm -hmm. right? That like they, they, they're not willing to slowly brick brick. build the business over time. They want to like, I want it all and I want it now. I want an Oompa Loompa daddy, like give it everything, everything now. And I'm like, that's not how the world works. No. And when I heard that podcast, you and Ed talked about the, the sort of the, the science of habit forming, mm -hmm. right? Break that down for us. Because the person listening right now, there. let's just say this goes out in a couple of weeks and maybe somebody's listening to this in January. I don't know, yeah. maybe February, maybe February of 2027, they're listening to this. And, and they're gonna say to themselves, oh yeah, I started the new year. And I'm like, okay, this is the year where I'm gonna start working out consistently. I'm gonna make my phone calls. I'm gonna follow my schedule perfectly. I'm gonna be the perfect spouse. I'm gonna do mm -hmm. Here's all my list. And what happens to that person within a week or two? We both know the answer. Yeah, most of them are not doing those things. It, yeah. Probably didn't do anything because yeah. it's just overwhelming. So, so break down like how do, how do they do it and what's the key numbers they need to be aware of? I've been a fan of yours for a while and I love your approach. And one of the things I've always been most attracted to is that you like to break things down to be as simplified as possible. Yep. And I, I think uh, complexity undermines execution. So the more Big simple time. we can make things, the better. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a self-diagnosed quote nerd. And one of my favorite quotes of all time is, if you try and chase two rabbits, they both get away. Right. So pick which one you're going after and go grab that That's sucker. It. That's and it. And there was a study that I saw, and this changed everything for me because mm -hmm. I also was someone who could easily chase the shiny and chase the flashy, right. try right. and do multiple things at once. Um, I saw a study that was done by a gentleman named John Berardi, yep. uh, who started a company called Precision Nutrition. Yes. And he did a research <clears throat> study and he found that when they had one group focus on changing one singular behavior at a time, mm -hmm. and when they only focused on one behavior, they had an 85 percent success rate. 
Bingo. I'm not a gambler. I'm not a big better, but you tell me that I have an 85% 5%. chance. I'm taking all of my chips and I'm all in. Yes. They're all going in. Right. I like those odds. Right. But too. what I, what absolutely blew my mind was in the second group, control group, uh, they had them try and change two habits simultaneously. And the percentage of success dropped down to about 40%. Yeah. Less than half of that original group. Right. Right. And then just for giggles and smiles, he had a third group try to change three behaviors simultaneously and their percentage of success dropped down to about four or five percent. Yeah. So just by diverting our focus and attention from one to two or one to three, we go from 85 percent success down to four or five percent. And as soon as I read that, I said, I'm going to start having singular focus right. in everything I'm going to change. Right. So here's the process that I recommend folks go through. Um, do a little bit of I'm, a self I'm audit. So, I was you're you're. Look, I'm taking notes. Please, I, I love yes. it. Yes, give it to me. Do a self audit. Come up with a list of a few things that you think you should start doing and mm -hmm. a few things you think you need to stop doing yep. because these things are getting in the way of you becoming the best version of yourself. Yep. And once you have a list of three or four, I want you to really reflect and I just want you to circle one. Not one on each side, yeah. just one. Just one. Here's something I need to start doing to improve my life mm -hmm. or improve my business yep. or stop doing because it's been undermining it. Yes. Once you've picked one, and that is step number one, you make a commitment to doing that for the next 66 days. Uh, the research is all over the place when it comes to habit forming. 21 days is a lie. Yeah. I mean, it, but it could be like making your bed. Yeah. 21 days, got well, it. Brushing well, your teeth, got exactly. it. Exactly. Right. And ultimately, I don't think the actual day, is, the number of days is that important. No. It's just more of having a target in your mind. Right. And I like 66 days yeah. because it's doable, mm -hmm. but it's still a little bit of a stretch. It's just yeah. a hair over two months. Yeah. But you make a commitment to either starting or stopping this one behavior yep. for the next 66 yep. days. Yep. I'm old school. I love printing out a paper calendar, getting a red Sharpie and making an X. And Me I too. tell you what, there are very few things in life as satisfying right. as putting a red X on a calendar right. and starting to see that chain of red X's build up. It'll yep. help you give, get confidence. 100%. 100%. So that's step two is you make the commitment to doing it for 66 mm -hmm. days. And then here's the big one. And I know this is what you and your, your empire and your community mm -hmm. do mm -hmm. so well. You recruit an inner circle of people to hold you accountable to this. Thank so this is going yep. to be your, yep. your, they're going to help keep Structure, the spotlight on. accountability, focus, Absolutely. Right? in it together. Yep. Yes. And these yep. people are going to check in with you every single day for the next 66 days <clears throat> yep. to make sure you do what you say you're going to do. Yep. So let's just say to make this one easy, because I think physical fitness is, is a, a visceral example. Someone says, I need to start having more self-care to how I treat my body so right. that I have more energy and more focus throughout the day. Yeah. So I'm going to make a commitment to go for a walk for 30 minutes every morning. Mm -hmm. That's just one thing. Yeah. They didn't buy a Peloton bike. They didn't get a, a membership yeah. to the yoga studio. They yeah. didn't have a, yeah, yeah, a dietitian yeah, yeah. come in and buy them groceries. All they're going to do is go for a walk once a day for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. They make the commitment to doing that for 66 days. They print out their calendar. They put it on their desk. They get a beautiful red Sharpie. Yeah. And then they tell the people closest to them. Could be a spouse. Could be an adult child. Could be a coach. Could be someone they work with. Could yeah. be a neighbor. Yeah. And say, I want you to text me every single morning and ask me if I went for a walk. Yeah. Ask me, did I go outside or walk on the treadmill? Ask yeah. me how far I went. Exactly. Ask me what I listened to mm -hmm. and check in with me. And, yep. you know, one of the emotions that unites all human beings outside of psychopaths is we don't like to disappoint the people that we care about. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if I know you're going to text me later today to ask if I went for my walk, I don't want to let you down. Right. You're my guy. Right. So right. That, that's going to give me just a little bit of extra incentive mm -hmm. to do it above mm -hmm. and beyond the own personal commitment I made to myself. Yeah. And, and if you pick one, you do it for 66 days and you get a team of people to hold you accountable. I'm betting everything I got on the yep. fact that you are going to change that habit. Bingo. And then the beautiful part is at the end of 66 days, now you pick something else yep. that has become a part of your life. I See, now identify as someone who goes for a yep. walk every morning. And now I'm going to add, when I get back from my walk, I'm going to stack a green smoothie on top of that. Right. And I'm going to do that for 66 days. Yep. And then after my green smoothie, I'm going to meditate for 10 minutes. Yep. And over the course of a year, you will have added four or five behaviors that yep. are helping take you to the person you want to be or eliminating some behaviors that have preventing you from that. You'll be a completely different person by the end of 2023 if you're willing to stack bricks like this and you're, you're willing to do this as methodically as I just laid it out. Right. But with everything I just said, it's as basic as can be. My own yes. children understand yes. that it's still not easy. No. And I want to make that disclaimer because I don't want anyone to put on the cruise control and say, oh, that formula Alan just shared. Yeah, that'll be easy. It still won't be easy. On day 13, mm -hmm. you're going to wake up and you're going to want to pull the covers over your head because it's cold and it's rainy outside and you're not going to want to go for that walk. And then if you miss a day and then you start to stack the shame and the guilt on top and tell yourself, I'm no good. I knew I couldn't do this. And then one missed day becomes two and then you've fallen off. 
So don't allow that to happen. No. Lean into this and know that even though I've just given you the recipe, it is still going to be hard, but lean into hard. And I'm telling you, everybody listening can do that. My community knows, choose your hard. Uh, it's hard to make phone calls. Of course. It's also hard to not have clients. Choose your hard. Love that. Right? Hard to follow a schedule. Mm -hmm. It's also hard to have absolutely no control of your time. Yeah. Choose your hard, right? So so my my community definitely gets this. So I've been talking, since since I got that from your podcast, I've shared it. I mean, how many times, like Idris at events that I'm just like. Awesome. So you got to pick one. I think the hardest thing that people have is picking the right one. Yeah. Right? So So the business person listening right now is like, okay, well, like, what is that first domino that when I hit that domino, a whole bunch of other dominoes drop? And I, I love the simplicity of the start and stop. I didn't hear that on the show. Like this, this is a good distinction for me. Like, what do I need to stop doing professionally? What do I need to start doing professionally? And even if it's just for you, talking to 10 people every single day that already know you, like you, and trust you, we know that 65% of all listings are being taken today. Yeah inside of people's past clients and sphere and people that directly refer to them. Yeah. If they just did that in this environment, they're going to win. Yeah. So well, this, this formula, start, stop, pick one, 66 days, simple. It, absolutely. But not easy. Not easy. But one of the ways we heighten self-awareness is counterintuitive as this sounds mm -hmm. is we ask others. We ask those that know us closely. Right. So, so have right. a hard conversation with your spouse, with your right. children, with your right. colleagues and coworkers right. and business partners and say, if there was one, if you could wave a wand and I started doing one thing yep. differently tomorrow, what yep. do you think that one thing should be? Yep. And you could do that personally or professionally. But remember, we're playing the long game. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying, Tom, you're gonna change one habit and then just ride off into the sunset. No. You're going to change a habit every 66 days for the rest of your life. Right. So even if you don't pick the one, you still have plenty of other opportunities to do that in the exactly. future. So don't exactly. have this paralysis yeah. of analysis yep. where you're you're, yep. you're spending so much time, I gotta make sure I'm doing the right one. I gotta make sure I'm doing the right, well, you're not doing anything. Right. So just pick one and let's go after it. And then right. sometimes as you start to get active, those things will become clear. Yes. A few months down the road, you go, you know what I think is really preventing me from being fill in the blank, mm -hmm. happy, successful, fulfilled. I think it's this thing. This is the next thing I'm going to tackle. Yeah. And now we can be rather strategic and enjoy it. En enjoy the, the taking control of your own future. Bingo. And for the person listening, remember, this is the thing I'm trying to install. Like that's the way I describe it. Like it's like, I'm going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to let my iPhone go three, four installs of new iOS Cause like now my phone is getting slower. Things yeah. aren't working right. Apps can't be downloaded. It's the same thing, right? So I need to install this new habit. Yeah. It would be nice if it was like the matrix, you know, Hey, you, I need to know how to fly a B12 helicopter. Right. Uh -huh. We'll get there eventually with Elon Musk's little disc. I think so. But I want to remind the person listening, this doesn't mean that you aren't learning a new skill, that you're not refining your listing presentation, improving your marketing, getting better at videos, getting better of at course. negotiations. This is about what's the new habit or ritual that I want to install that I know is going to shift everything in my life when I do it right. Yes. And I, I agree with you, whether it was intentional or not, always starting first with your health and vitality. Absolutely. Right? Get well, your health and thing. vitality right, and then everything else can kind of really go from there. We, we try to compartmentalize these different areas of our life, but they're all interwoven. We're very right. holistic beings. Right. Because one can argue, if you don't prioritize your sleep, your mental we acuity goes down, your yes. focus goes yes. down. It, what happens when, when we, we tend to not sleep? We become ornery, we become oh. uh, frustrated, we be, get agitated. Right. That's, gonna, that's gonna help erode our relationships. That's gonna make us make poor decisions from a business standpoint. So one could make a, an argument that sleep could be the cornerstone <clears throat> to improving every single aspect of your life. So my community would be say, take your meds. Mm. You gotta meditate, you gotta exercise, you gotta diet, and you gotta sleep. Sure. Right, and, and for many it's just, Get some sleep. Yeah. Because most entrepreneurs, as you know, you know, they sleep like babies. They wake up every hour and the hour going, oh my God, oh my God, <laughs> I need to write that down. I need to call that person, right? Because yeah. we're just, you know, it's kind of wired that way. Uh, by the way, looking at my readiness score today, uh, 77. Not that ready for the no, day. I think you beat me by two. I think mine was a 75. But Mi look at Miss Aura told me that I was not prepared to bring the fire today on your podcast. So I chose to politely ignore her. Um, <laughs> And, and I'll deal with that later. Because We've had this conversation. I gotta have the switch on. <laughs> yeah, like it says sleep, I gotta pay attention. My <laughs> HR value, you know, the recovery index. I'm like, but again, so let's talk about that for a second. Well, right? I'm gonna tell you why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had such a, a, a great time with you guys last night and I enjoyed the conversations yeah, immensely. Yeah. I couldn't turn my brain off last night. Oh, I get my it. mind was I, spinning from too. just some of the ideas and the right. enthusiasm of right. the people you attracted right. into that room. Right. I was like, it was like Christmas Eve for a little kid. Yes. I was so yes. excited Presents and so jacked everywhere. up to get up and see you today. Yeah. 
that I had trouble sleeping, yeah. but that's okay. I still prioritize sleep, right. I emphasize it. I still went through my sleep routine yep. to try to get the best sleep yeah. I could. Yep. And it just didn't happen. And yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. We were talking this morning in the car on the on the ride over because we're both, you know, we wear these aura rings. And I, <laughs> so I actually got this from Peter Diamandis like oh. 20, I don't know, whenever whenever it first came out. I was okay. part of, I'm part of Abundance 360. Yeah. He gave them to everybody. We all I, we were basically the test pilots. We were the guinea pigs, sure. right? So like track everything. And I'm like, okay, I'm telling him everything about my entire body for the rest of my life. Got yes. it. With that said, you and I talked this morning about routines. Uh-huh. Right. So so the person listening right now, like I am the biggest fan of I used to say like take a record, right? And you play that record over and over again because you want that beautiful song, you want that mm -hmm. hit, you want that beat, whatever it is, you you know the vibe that it creates for you. Well, the record is, to me, the routine. Yes. What is the best routine for someone to have to put themselves into a peak state so it doesn't matter what my aura ring says? Because like I look at it, but I don't say, well, therefore I've got to take the day off and get some rest. And like I say, I still need to go be unapologetically Tom Ferry every day, no matter mm -hmm. what. Whether I slept three hours or eight hours doesn't make a difference. Got to go, right? Yes. How how have you found routines to be beneficial? And what are some of the things that you would recommend for the listener if they wanted to not have the past, not have the BS, not have the bad night's sleep interrupt them, but instead, hey, run these plays and you'll always be in sort of a peak state and bam, you can go perform. Ever since I was a little kid, I have craved structure. I love consistency and I love routine. That's something I've always known about myself. Mm -hmm. I feel most comfortable and most alive when I can have these, th when I have my ducks in a row. Yeah. I certainly recognize that's not how everybody else no, operates. Some sure. people prefer sure. some spontaneity. Yes. So I don't believe there is a singular best routine for everyone. I mm -hmm. think everyone needs to prioritize mm -hmm. figuring theirs out. Right. I've also, I love early morning. Like yeah. even when I was a little kid, I would wake up super early in the morning. That's always been a preference of mine. And I know that I have my highest energy before 10 a.m. Yep. So I schedule my days. So most of my critical thinking or mm -hmm. most of my physical yep. energy expenditure yep. is going to happen before 10 a.m. because that's when I'm at my best. Yep. So the most important thing is that everyone listening figures out how they operate best. Figure out how much sleep do you need to operate at a high level? Could be seven and a half hours, could be nine, but you need to know that. Mm -hmm. Figure out you know, how much exercise or what types of foods to eat. So a lot of it will be some initial trial and error. Right. You know, you take somebody like LeBron James. I don't know if the Lakers are playing tonight or not, but let's assume they are. Yeah. Do you think LeBron is gonna be walking around the streets of LA at five o'clock going, wonder what I'm gonna eat for dinner tonight? Of course not. No. He knows exactly what to eat, when to eat it. He has got everything lined up before he he shows up to the arena to right. play at a high level. Right. Now, I bet you that routine has changed since he was a rookie. For In 20 sure. years, he has figured out some, some oh, tweaks yeah. to make, yep. but nothing is haphazard. So the yeah. most important part is to take control of the bookends of your day. Mm -hmm. The first 60 minutes after you wake up and the last 60 minutes before you go to bed. Yep. Everybody talks about the sexiness of morning routines, but evening, evening routines, routines are just as important. I'm all about that. It, it's yes. the chicken and the egg. Yeah. You know what it comes is. before a morning routine? Right. right. The previous night's evening routine right. to get that right. sleep. Right. So start figuring out what that will be mm -hmm. and, and document it. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have a day where you just feel on fire, you mm -hmm. were in the zone, you yep. felt great, high yep. energy, you were yep. thinking clearly, yeah. backtrack for 48 hours and ask yourself, what did I eat? How much did I exercise? What did I read? What did I, like figure it out. And then yep. you're going to start to see some trends. Yeah. You'll start to notice when I go to bed at this time and wake up at this time and I eat this for breakfast. I feel more alive. Yeah. Well, then do more of that. You know, one of the oldest adages yeah. to success is do more of what works, do less of what doesn't. Yes. If people would just follow that, nothing mm -hmm. else that I said right. this entire conversation, right. do more of what works and less of what doesn't, you will see your performance and your fulfillment skyrocket. Look, Don't make things complicated. Look right behind you. Plays that work. Yes. That's, I mean, that's, that's, that's my fourth book. Plays at work. Just run plays at work. Stop doing dumb shit. So here's an exercise that I'd love for folks to do. Take yeah. a piece of paper like you yep. have here and you draw a vertical line down the middle. Mm -hmm. On the left side of that line, I want you to come up with a very exhaustive list of the things that fill your bucket. Yep. Mentally, yep. physically, yep. emotionally, spiritually, yep. if that's yep. appropriate. Yeah. But I want you, and it could be conversation with a loved one, mm -hmm. taking a Peloton class, taking my dog for a walk, listening to a podcast, like come up with a list of the things. Listening that, that, to music. Yes. That seeing feel, a friend, right? Any of these things, right, meditation, right. prayer, yeah. Yeah. working out, whatever yep. it is, yep. but come up with a list of 10 to 12 things that make you feel alive. Mm -hmm. On the right side of the paper, on the other side, write down how you've been spending the bookends of your day. Yeah. Not, not what you wish you've been doing, not what others have told you you should do, but how have you spent in the last week, your morning and evening routine and write that down. 
and then take a big piece of humble pie and compare the two sides of the paper and ask yourself, am I doing the things in the morning and evening yep. that fill my bucket and make me feel alive? Yep. Now, even the highest performers in the world will start to find what's called a performance gap. Yep. And it's the gap between what we know we should be doing to be our best selves and what we actually do. Yes. And when we can all work so to start good. closing that gap, yep. that's when we see performance start to skyrocket. Yeah. So start taking things from the left side of the paper and start sprinkling them in to your morning and evening routine. You will be a better spouse. You'll be a better parent. You'll be a better member of your community. You'll absolutely be better in, in real estate and running businesses yep. as an entrepreneur yep. because these things feed everything else. So you have to care enough about yourself and care enough about those that you care about to make those things a priority. And I'm telling you, and it, you don't have to block off a, a two hour morning no. routine. No. Spend 15 minutes every morning doing something that makes you feel alive mm -hmm. and do something at night and sandwich the rest of your day in between that. And I'm telling you, 2023 will be the best year of your life. Right. My crew knows when you feel good, you perform good. When you perform good, you want to take more action. Yes. You get amazing results. And that thing starts to spiral on a real positive flywheel. Yeah. So this was awesome, man. All right. This was fun. As we wrap this up, um, you've got two insane books. Which one should they read first? Which one should they read? I know this is the second book. Thank you, by the way, for the signed copy. Of course. I would recommend starting with Raise Your Game. Yeah. And then once you've, not that any of us will ever reach that proverbial mountaintop. Yeah. I'll be on the climb for the rest of my life. For sure. But I do for know sure. that as you start to make progress, what will derail your progress is an inability to manage stress, avoid stagnation, or beat burnout. That was why yeah. I wrote the second book. Yeah. So Raise Your Game will teach you how to make the climb. Sustain Your Game will teach you how to stay there, not for years, yeah. for decades like right. you've done. Right. But most right. importantly, perform at a high level and love what you're doing. Yeah. Cause if you don't have joy and fulfillment yep. in your work, then you right. need to pivot and find something different. So read, raise your game, yep. read, sustain your game. And if anyone ever needs me for anything, they can reach out, DM me on any of the social platforms. Love it's it. always my honor to get back to people and help. Love this it. is what I love to do. That's and how we connected. Others, That's absolutely. how we connected. Yes. Well, serving others yes. is what fills my bucket. I know. So I love trying to add value to others. Yeah. Little, little fun fact for everyone listening right now. When you see me answering questions on Instagram, which I answer thousands of questions every year, like yeah. just, hey, God, I'm going to be on an airplane. It's usually I'm dealing with something in my own life. And I switch from dealing with that to what is the answer and then go back to contribution. Yeah. And the fastest way for me to contribute oftentimes when I'm by myself on an airplane is to say, who's got a question? Yeah. So next time you see that, you know, there's probably something going on inside my head that I'm working on. Um. You know what this reminds me of? If I I don't I, I say this with the most respect. Sure. It's like the best of Timmy Grover with like the best of Mel Robbins in one book. Well, I, you with me? Like I that's take, like when I first did, listened to the audiobook, I was like, this is so full of just actionable. I say easy, easy to comprehend, yeah. easy to write down what fills my bucket, you know, and then like go, oh, oh yeah, stop doing that shit. Do more of that <laughs> shit. Like, and I like that. You, you heard me say it. Like, I like simplify, simplify, simplify. Don't complicate things because most people complicate things and well, then they don't do anything. So this has been really good, man. That, that I really is an appreciate unbelievable you. compliment because I have so much respect and reverence for both of them. I've learned and devoured both of their content. Yes. So yes. No, that compliment is very well received and appreciated. Yeah. Thank well, you, brother. Well earned, my friend. Well earned. So. Hey, who do you know that needs to listen to this? You might have a friend, a kid, a buddy, a coworker that may be just hitting the forward on, or I don't know, maybe it's copy and paste if you're listening to this on the audio, um, but forward this to a friend, maybe someone you know that got impacted by the headwinds of real estate and they just like, you've told them a couple of times, but they, sometimes we just need to hear it from somebody else. Yes. Right. And it's funny how that works. Like, you know, like we say to our kids, you know, you might want to think about, and then you say to my son, you should think about, and they're like, that Alan guy is pretty darn smart. <laughs> Maybe this could be that moment. So if you're listening to this right now, cause somebody sent it to you, it's because they love you. Just heads up on that. All right, Alan, we got to bounce. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Absolutely follow this guy on social, get a copy of the book. Most importantly, he gave you three or four great ideas to act on today. Do that. And I'll see you on the next podcast. See you soon.